Greetings from Ann Arbor, Michigan, a great state and a great place of the great USA. Welcome to our podcast series, and I am promising you that this series is going to be very enlightening, very inspirational, a lot of fun, and something that will really, I think, help you as you walk your path to holiness. This series is going to have a lot of different things that you probably have questions about, but maybe have the opportunity to ask, especially about religion just life. Like, what do they do all day? Who are they? Where do they come from? What's it like when a young woman enters religious life? So stay tuned as we will discuss where sisters come from today. Welcome back to our Go LE Digital series named The Truth Will Set You Free. And today, if you have been watching these in any kind of sequence, or if you haven't, it doesn't exactly matter, but I know that I have had a sister on that has delighted you and the entire audience, and Sister Maria Silva. And so, yes, believe it or not, we have Sister Maria with us again today in our studio here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And Sister, I would like to welcome you back. Thanks, Sister. And I appreciate you coming back because I know how precious your time is with everything that you are doing. And in particular, when you do come in from your obedience there in Rome, that you have little time um, to really be with our community, with our sisters, and how um, we're a close community, we're a close family, and so we we love that. And of course, we're not all uh, privileged to be able to be in Rome, so we want to get all your stories, which are multitudinous, and so we just really enjoy having you around. Sister, today... If you would um, join me in talking about a different episode <laughs> that occurred in our lives that uh, we certainly would never have anticipated. And I'll give the beginning of how this happened in our community and um, then, the Sister Maria, the, the pivotal role that you played in it um, also. So Mother Assumpta and I were traveling, and when we got back from who knows where, this was 2010, early 2010, and there was a note on Mother's desk, and it was basically saying, Harpo called, please return the call at this number. So Mother called me in and basically said, do you know anybody named Harpo? (laughs) And I said, not a clue. Never heard that one before. Is there a last name? Is that the first name? Where do, how do you, what's that name? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. I I don't either. So one night after dinner, she asked the entire community present, did anyone, does anyone know who Harpo is? Someone took a message and and put it on my desk in my absence that Harpo called (laughs) H A R P O. And one sister raised her hand kind of quietly and she said, I took the message. And so she said, Who in the world is this? I mean, do I really return it or do I not? Another sister kind of quietly said, Well, I don't know if I'm right, but Harpo is Oprah spelt backwards. Mm-hmm. And then it goes, It can't be. And we were like, You've got to be kidding. So she called back, Sister Maria. The very next day, she made a phone call. And she said, with whom am I speaking? Well, you have reached the headquarters in Chicago of Oprah, the Oprah Winfrey Show. And she goes, well, I think I've received a phone call from here. Can you tell me why? Was that, is that true? Was it a mistake? Why would Oprah be calling us? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So then the explanation was given. um, Oprah is looking for something she hasn't really done before her 25 years of the Oprah Winfrey Show ends. And it came up in one of her discussions that she really hadn't done religious, that wear the habit and live the community life and have a great deal of prayer and all this other thing. And um, she was wondering if your community would be willing to come on the Oprah Winfrey show. And Mother was like, I don't really know. Let me get back with you. So then she went and asked her counsel and... um, and different people were saying whatever. We were taking it to prayer, and um, 
I remember my personal response was, if Jesus is willing to walk on water for the likes of us, we can go on Oprah for him. <laughs> <laughs> but what also really helped was one of our sisters, Sister John Dominic, one of the founders, is also knows Amy Grant very well, having grown up with her there in Nashville. And so she said, well, I know she's been on her program, so let me call her and just say, what's it like? So right. Sister called, and Amy just went on and on and on about how respectful Oprah is of everybody's opinion and everybody's interest and um, that that it was really a beautiful experience for her to be on the program. So we decided we would do it, which I think probably as after it was over kind of surprised Oprah too um, because she really didn't know our community. But I did realize that one young woman who worked for her had suggested that maybe we would do it mm -hmm. because we were an out front community that was doing things for the new evangelization and she had made our one of our vocation discernment retreats see how these keep playing up in this role god is using them so we were um told that the next afternoon by five o'clock vespers that a crew from oprah would be visiting us <laughs> so they got on a plane and they came from chicago that very next day and they came and they filmed um many episodes at, well, I shouldn't say episodes, many scenes at the mother house. And um, they did a lot of filming to really get the feel of our community. And they came to prayers and they came to um, recreation. And they were just a, a, a presence for a lot of parts of, of our community life whereby they would try to understand it because it was very foreign to them, right. to, to put it mildly. Lisa Ling came as, as really the host, um, and um, Brad Oberman was actually the one who led the cameras and told us what to do and where to go. He organized it from that standpoint. So it was a very interesting uh, situation, which we have a lot of stories, but I'm not going to go into those now. But they, they were fascinating stories and interesting to see, so to speak, the world come into the convent and all of a sudden try to make us real when they didn't know who we were, why we were, what we were, and, but they were interested. And so it's just a, a, an incredible story. And so our sisters were flown to Chicago. Um, so we had five sisters flown there for the very first segment, which uh, took place in February 2010. And I remember we had just changed our particular our community's website um, to what it really is now, though we continue to update, but still to have the power that it had. And Oprah had warned us, when I am on a program, if you have a website whatsoever, I've been known to crush many by the, uh, yeah. the onslaught. Right, yeah. And so we pushed the button for our new one to go on with all this extra, which we'd already been working on by God's providence, right at the time the program came on. A sister, it would have not just crushed. It would have annihilated it totally. Yeah. Uh, just decimated our previous, more antiquated, I guess I would say, um, really first website of the community, mm -hmm. which was certainly adequate, but until we began getting, um, <laughs> not for Oprah's audience, so, and that continued for a while. Then shortly thereafter, and this is where Sister Maria in particular comes in, shortly thereafter, Oprah is contacting us with the facts that she is receiving so much um, feedback. Now, Oprah's programs at that point in time, and perhaps uh, they still do, um, though I do not know, but at that point in time, the Oprah Winfrey Show would actually go around the world and it would take almost a year to circuit the world. So we knew that someplace in the world, somebody was seeing the community like for the very first time. We began getting inquiries for the community, et cetera. And Oprah kept saying, let me know how many you're getting because I'm really hoping that I'm helping your community out, et cetera, et cetera. So what, and this is part of what I want you to speak um, to in a few minutes. What became at the very beginning of the very first segment back in February very much, uh, I don't understand who you are, why you would do that, you know, Oprah. Um, why would you take vows? Poverty? That's not my style. Chastity? What are you thinking? Obedience? Oh, give me a break. Are you really obedient to, you mean young women are doing this? And you mean your average age at that point in time was like 28? 
and you at that point we had I think 15 postulants that had just entered and it was just such an incredible for the world to say what what's going on and why are you doing this um, and I think too, Sister Maria, of your earlier episode, which everybody needs to watch even before you watch this one, so you really have Sister Maria's full personality, that you too I had to go through, is this it? And why am I doing this? Because you too had hit the top rung, so to speak, and, and the world's desire for success and the money and what the money could bring you and certainly um, so many of the things that the world would say, I'm, I'm hitting the top. I'm, I'm, I've made myself. I've become successful. And yet your own, as you so beautifully expressed in the previous segment, yearnings of your heart that were not completed and weren't really touched on a very deep level while you were sitting in the midst of opulence, basically, that you had won for yourself through a great deal of hard labor. So Oprah began to really change. And at the end of that particular segment, I also want to bring this in. The sisters gave Oprah a homemade rosary mm -hmm. and a how to pray the rosary card. And whereas Oprah always would walk among her audience at the end, and so that was part of the thrill of being in her audience, one of the gentlemen who worked for her came out to the audience that particular time and said, I'm so sorry, but Oprah has asked me to let you know she's not going to walk among the audience today. She is so enthralled by the sisters. She's back there, and they're just carrying on. And so she's going to continue with the sisters as long as she has this time with them. Again, wasn't it all that long after that we began? Um, we didn't begin it, but Oprah communicated again. Uh, we should have been going back and f forth, but to say, you're good for my business. You got number three in my entire series, my entire uh, year, um, and I have a lot of movie stars, etc. You all did real well for my business. You are, you're coming back. And so at that point... Actually, if you remember, yeah. I asked Mother permission to send her an email, send you her did. invitation. You did. You did. And Mother said yes, surprisingly uh -huh. so. But first of all... We had said no, because this is this is a little bit before we had said, mm -hmm. you know, that really is cutting into our teaching schedule, mm -hmm. et cetera. We have other things going on. So we had said no. Well, Oprah continued and continued. So finally we said, okay, well, we'll do it one more time, but, but that's it. So the thing that next was becoming, coming on the radar is we had to prepare for our sister's um, who were entering the, the new postulants. That was another whole group from all over the USA and Canada and other places. We had to prepare for the first profession of vows, poverty, chastity, and obedience for our sisters who were novices, and for the final profession. And so the final profession that year just happened to have in it the group Sister Maria, who was going to be making her final vows with sisters. And Oprah had heard about this, and Sister Maria had... Um, you can take it from here. At yes. this point in time, you had contacted her. Because I asked Mother if we could send her an invitation saying, without cameras, yes. without Good. the people, just you, to come and witness this wedding ceremony that's like no other you've ever experienced <laughs> exactly. before. Because really, I mean, what is it? What are, the, what, are we, uh, what are we all about? The salvation of souls, right? And that's everybody, including exactly. Oprah. It doesn't matter who you are, how rich you are, how famous you are. And so we really wanted to just evangelize her because, you know, you're right. When you have this, when you're, when you have everything, you know. Exactly. And you realize that there's something missing, you seek it. That's what she's doing. Exactly. You know, you see that and and all that she does, there's this all this longing yes. for what's true, good and beautiful. Um, and I think she still well, is so. looking for that and longing mm -hmm. for that. And that's what I think we why we appeal to her so much because beautiful. Here she sees what she doesn't uh -huh. quite realize that she's seeing, she's looking dead in the face what she herself is looking for. Exactly. <laughs> You know, but it takes so, time, sister, right? Sister, did she ever respond to your invitation? She did. All of a sudden, I was at, I was <laughs> table waiting, and Mother says, all, for ask the table waiters to come to the refectory, and Mother says, well, we're going to do it again. We're gonna <laughs> and I thought, oh, good Lord, help us. Like, <laughs> because really, honestly, I really wanted her, just her to come, not because of who she yes. is, but because could you imagine? No, but I would love for it. How? impactful it would be 
if she not only converted, uh-huh. but if she had like if she had a catechesis mm-hmm. that was strong, mm-hmm. that was compelling, she could be another Ar- Archbishop Fulton. Yes, Shane. she could. She has the natural gifts, be- and she also has she the does. viewers yes, everywhere. She does. Yes, she does. She would bring. She would. She would certainly make a lot mm-hmm. of enemies, but she would also bring a lot of people to the she, church. She would. she would. And I thought that's if we could get someone like her mm-hmm. to really understand who the person of Jesus Christ is, Beautiful. really fall in love with him mm-hmm. and his church then that would be extraordinary, Now, Sister, explain to our audience what your final profession meant. Like, what was it? Why did you want her to come there rather than just visit the mother house at some point in time? Because I think final profession is one of those beautiful times in the church's history when you actually witness a little bit of heaven and earth, kind of like this spiritual, mystical blurring of heaven and earth. And it's just, particularly you feel it at the Litany of the Saints, I think. And what is the whole ceremony about? um, It's laying down your life. And, and just saying, forever I am yours, my my Lord and my God, and I I throw my lot in with you. I, I choose to be poor, chaste, and obedient mm-hmm. for all the days of my life, and I trust that you're gonna you're gonna figure out all the details. You know, <laughs> I I think one of the sisters had said this and I thought it's so true. She said, You vow what you do not yet know. Oh, like that's I don't perfect. know what the Lord has in store for me. Oh, but that's, that's okay. Perfect. He knows better than I do, right? That's right. And it's 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 beautiful because you're basically saying, I want to live heaven on earth. Because we're all supposed to be, we're all called to union with Christ. Love it. In heaven, right? And mm-hmm. so we kind of skip the step mm-hmm. of marriage mm-hmm. that kind of reflects that, right? Mm-hmm. So we're living heaven on earth because we want to be united with Christ here so that we can bring as many people as we can to his heart, as Beautiful. many people as we can to just fall more deeply and madly in love with him. Beautiful. And, and, and final vows is that ultimate desire to say, I'm all in. Mm-hmm. All of this is worth it. All of this is the most beautiful thing. Yes, I was living the good life, but now I'm living the best one. <laughs> I love really. it. Really. That's beautiful, sister. But Oprah did not come. So then what she happened? She didn't. But I uh, know. It made me so mad. I know. <laughs> but you know, God it's works your through. wedding day. Yeah, it's true. Well, they sent the whole crew thing, and I'm like, well, that defeats the purpose. <laughs> but it doesn't. Because, right, no, doesn't St. Dom- Dominic would have been so proud, sister, that Beautiful. we were in the living rooms of people that if we tried to knock on their doors, they would turn off the lights <laughs> and pretend they weren't home. <laughs> what are a bunch of nuns doing at my doorstep? <laughs> (laughs) (laughs) Really, honestly, and I see time and time again where I'll be in random places all over the world, not even just the country, Uh where people will say, aren't you that nun from Oprah? I'm sure. I kid you not. I'm sure. It's been 10 years. Mm -hmm. This is a little bizarre, Uh but it's just... I think you will always have that. (laughs) Yes. But it's just, you know, you you realize St. Dominic and our Lord had in his hand in all of it. Yes. Because the world saw a wedding that they've never seen before. Yes. They saw the espousal of a human being with the eternal God. Good grief. That's, it's it's worth it. It's, it's I mean, why and not? And remember the wedding cake? They featured oh the wedding cake there, especially the sisters make so their own funny. wedding cake. Not the one, not the brides, but the rest of us pitch in. And it was layers upon layers, and it was decorated beautifully, and it had all these pretty roses on it. And it just, it's, it's just a very multi tier, yeah. gorgeous wedding cake. And so the the new brides, the the religious who have just made their final vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, take that knife and they slice into that cake. Yeah. And all this footage was shown on a second segment. Yeah. So when we agreed to go back and Oprah sent the crew to your beautiful marriage with your final vows. Then we got another invitation that we had to, and we agreed to, certainly. We wouldn't have had to, but she really wanted us to come back in November of that year. When Catholic nuns take their final vows, they call it their wedding day. Did you all know that? I did not know that till the last show that we did. I was so fascinated by that. And the groom is Jesus Christ. The Dominican Sisters of Mary invited us to their big day. Look at this. 
and she wanted us to send two sisters and you were one of the ones that was chosen, Sister mm -hmm. Maria, along with Sister Maria Catherine. Yes. So now give us your rendition of what it was like to sit on that stage to talk face-to-face -face with Oprah as we are doing right now. I remember the battering that went back and forth, and I have to say, Oprah could not get on top of our Sister Maria, <laughs> and Oprah is very smart. And it was so much fun. Really I, was. Mother Assumpta, Sister John Dominic, Sister Maria Samuel, we were privileged to be able to be in the audience, and we were laughing so hard, as was the rest of the audience. And Oprah was beside herself with what I would call joy. This summer, the sisters invited us to witness two extraordinary wedding ceremonies. It's my wedding day. <laughs> it's our wedding day. We met not one, but 13 nervous brides. A little nerve-wracking. Welcome, Oprah. We've been <laughs> waiting for this, this I, know, for, I mean, for three years in our whole life. Like any wedding, it's an emotional day for the bride's parents. It's very happy. It's been a, quite a journey. <laughs> Catholic priests preside over the wedding ceremony. Sisters take their eternal vows and enter into a marriage with Jesus Christ. The brides walk down the aisle in a single procession. The habit the sisters wear every day is considered their wedding dress. Their groom is present only in spirit. May Almighty God grant you His grace to fulfill your resolutions. Amen. Sisters profess these marriage vows twice during the eight years it can take to become a nun. I, Sister Maria Silva, make to God in your hands the simple vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience. After three years at the convent, the sisters in white veils are committing to Jesus for the first time. Sisters receive these veils Eight sisters go in a room where our cameras are not allowed and come out now wearing a black veil. Nuns who have worn now taking their final vows. The ceremony ends with the sisters lying face down at the altar. This marriage is a true covenant, a real communion of fidelity which will last forever. This ritual symbolizes the death of their old life and their ultimate commitment to serving Jesus Christ as their husband. She really was. She really was. She was going hook, line, and sinker into, I want something you have. Why don't you explain? It's interesting because, and, and a lot of people will say this, right? What's, what's very intriguing about her is that she is an extraordinarily generous yeah kind thoughtful individual mm -hmm. she's very attentive to the people that she's talked that she talks to mm -hmm. and you can tell she really is seeking that joy she really wants mm -hmm. um, she wants it she wants that joy you see it in her even how she tells her story of her own life uh -huh. right you know that she's mm -hmm. seeking this joy that seems it's just within her grasp right it's beautiful. it seems like and and it's because you know and you, you almost want to shake <laughs> Jesus. I thought you were going to actually at one point. <laughs> but it's it's one of the and you and I you and I both know this. That's something that's something that people have to really come to know themselves mm -hmm. in order for it to take hold of their mm -hmm. hearts and completely transform their lives. Mm -hmm. But she was extraordinary, uh -huh. incredibly respectful, mm -hmm. just like mm -hmm. Amy Grant said. Mm -hmm. It was just on a very natural level. Mm -hmm. She's a very virtuous woman. Yes, she is. She's I a very know. virtuous woman. Yes, she and she's just very easygoing, easy to talk to, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is surprising because you see, this is one of the wealthiest women in the United States, mm -hmm. and yet she sits there and talks to you like she's an old friend. She does. You she has it. a gift. You feel like we really, really know She really has other. a gift. Uh -huh. She really does. And so do you. You have that very same gift. Mm -hmm. I get that sure from my our, mom. Our audience yeah. is picking that up. So again, <laughs> you need to go back to Sister Maria's previous segment when she really explains that so much of who she is, she really did get from her mom. Yes. And here's a funny story with Brad, who okay. was, yeah, yes. oh my gosh, he was so funny, because when first vows... Yes. He says, okay, so you can hear. See, this is a little bit of the Hollywood coming in uh -huh. now. He goes, okay, sister, can you cry for me? What? Oh, <laughs> I said, no! I said, 
I'm not gonna tell you, I'm not gonna cry for you. And he goes, well, you're taking a vow of obedience. I said, I'm not taking a vow of obedience to you. I'm taking it to the mother. He's like, oh, come on, just a so tear. It would just make it so much better. So I said, funny. now just to spite you, I'm not gonna cry. That <laughs> is so It was funny. so funny because it was like, really, folks? Oh, that you, is so funny. Because they have this idea in their mind of what's gonna sell. Uh -huh. You don't mm -hmm. need the tear for it to sell. Definitely not. The reality really. is stronger than people watching yeah. it a hundred times will you pick don't, up. Yeah, you don't you need the tear for itself. You see the layers that yeah. you're drawn into. Yeah. Give us some of the um, back and forth that you and Oprah went through. Just um, actually, there was it's a, so entertaining. She was so she was so good. Actually, the first time I was skyped in, okay, when I, before I made first vows. Okay, um, you mean final vows? Fi well, because I was there for first and final okay. number. Okay. So when she skyped us in, when we were canonical novices, she asked a very pointed question, and I was surprised. Okay, because you know everyone says how respectful she is, but we were also told she she time and time again she has her little cue cards right. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. But she will go off the cue card uh -huh. sometimes, oh, for sure. and just uh -huh. and I and I said, okay. For some reason, I just knew she was going to choose me to to ask a pointed question, to ask them that might seem um, even a little inappropriate, right? Okay. And I thought that's still an evangelization moment. That's an, a moment Good. Good. to talk to yeah. young women, sure. because you know. The, the fact of the matter is, is that no one is perfect. Uh -huh. We all have our flaws, our faults, our sins, mm -hmm. but God is merciful and loving, mm -hmm. and his mercy and love is infinite, mm -hmm. and nothing that we do is unforgivable. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was, I thought, one of the most important things we could have done was just tell the world, God loves you. Beautiful. He's merciful and loving. Mm -hmm. Get right with the Lord, and mm -hmm. God can do amazing things for you. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing that was just, it was interesting to see how something that could be taken the wrong way uh -huh. or seen as in, like, inappropriate or okay. can actually be used for such a greater good. Beautiful. Thank you. That God can use those, all of those yes. things. Because, you know, there's a temptation because she even said, if there's anything ever that I ask that you're not comfortable with, uh -huh. say, I'd rather not answer that question, we'll cut it out. Yeah, it won't beautiful. even seem like it's. it'll be so seamless you wouldn't even know. And I, and I thought, no, that's not a question that I think we should just gloss over, especially in this day and age. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yes, it was, it was just the whole thing was surreal. It was surreal. Yeah, it was surreal. <laughs> Sister Maria and Sister Maria Catherine are here. We just saw them in the tape going through uh, from white veils to black. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank Congratulations. you so much. Black is my color. <laughs> <laughs> and so where were you in your life when you realized you wanted to be married to Jesus Christ? I was sitting in my, on my couch in my, in my house and I had an apartment on the lake and, <laughs> and I was in, in front of my TV and I had just finished decorating and I How old sat, I was, uh, this was 31. Mm -hmm. I sat in front of my couch and I looked at the stereo and I looked at the hot, like my whole entertainment center and I thought, and I said it out loud, I, don't, I usually don't talk to myself out loud. I said, I could give it up all tomorrow and it wouldn't mean a hill of beans. Really? I, I came to a point where I said, okay, this is it. And if I know this is it, then I have to do it. I have to, that's it. And you never looked back? No. Yeah. Okay, now you're sitting in front of her personally, not to Skype, but you're sitting in front of her personally. Mm -hmm. Tell some of the give and take, because she was, um, I think one of the things about you, well, first of all, your personality is like hers and that you say what you're thinking and you, uh, um, you're forthright and you come right out with it. Um, and I think she enjoyed that because I'm sure many others would have been a bit intimidated, whereas neither you nor Sister Maria Catherine appeared intimidated whatsoever. But with your uh, Bronx background, you certainly were not. <laughs> and yet, but I think, too, at least one of the aspects, and we could talk about it um, much more than this segment's going to allow, but I think one of the things was she saw herself in some ways in you, a young woman of today's world shooting for the top, becoming very successful, having the ability to purchase anything that your heart could ever desire or ever did desire, um, working up, so to speak, from the bottom up to mm -hmm. the top, um, finding a great deal of respect from others with this ability. And I think probably one of the things, um, tell us about the episode with 
with the shoes. I think <laughs> that that really okay. Um, so <laughs> that raised the the ante on the show quite a bit. So this you was were so fast. This was another Brad thing that he was just like, okay, what's going to be? Because he, you know what they want. And Brad, they, Brad is the producer. Yes, Brad they want buzzwords. They want yes, like yes. pithy, yes. like one liners that are going to catch. Mm -hmm. So he said, can you hold up? the Poshlin outfit, and the shoes. <laughs> okay. And just go with it. Uh-huh. Okay, so I said... That was so clever. <laughs> and so, he, so I was saying, this, like, and then I said, and the shoes, not Prada. <laughs> exactly. And then and all then, of a sudden, everybody calls me the Prada sister. That was so, that was so, <laughs> so funny. funny. And then if we skip ahead again to the actual on the stage, and there is Oprah with her... her she had Manola Blotniks on. Exactly, and you called it. <laughs> And she leaned up and looked at you like, how did you know? And you go, oh, I had several of those pair in different colors. And I think she was shocked to she see was, you sitting there. She thought there it was hysterical. In the Dominican yeah. habit, having just vowed, as we had seen on the screen from your your final vows, poverty, chastity, and obedience. And you were naming the exclusive brands that she was wearing. Right, right. And I yeah. don't think she thought any of us could have done that. <laughs> no, I couldn't have. But you certainly did it. Well, you know, one um, uh, during one of the commercial breaks, I leaned into her and told her something because I had watched Oprah as a kid. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh. Because it was on at like 4 o'clock after school. Oh, and there weren't okay. many things. I, I think I watched it after Little House on the Prairie. Like, <laughs> I watched Little House on the Prairie. And then I turn on Oprah. I, okay. And so I remember watching several of her episodes, whatever. And I remember one in particular. She talks about her her life and how she grew up and she was oh, you know in dire straits like that. Yeah, she like she, she grew up in, in a very poor yes. and she she built everything she has she yes. built from the ground mm -hmm. up and I remember when she told her story thinking about my own life and saying if she can do it so can I. Oh, sister, did you tell her that? I did. I said, and I was, I want to say I was like eight or nine years old at this point. But then again, in all of my stories, I'm usually eight or nine when I'm a kid. So <laughs> it was the, like the biggest time of my life I was eight or nine. But I remember watching it and thinking, this is someone who came from nothing. And so do I. Wow. And I can do something with my life just like she did. I was going to say, she probably did see a very strong commonality. Yeah. And I heard her and I said, I want you to know that you're one of the people that helped me to strive for what I have now. You know, oh, you're one of the reasons sister. why I wanted to make sure that I got a good education, that I did well in school. and that Because I saw that you, you started with very little. And you were able to make it to the top, and I wanted the same for me and oh, my family. Oh, sister, how did And she just, she just looked at me, and she said, that's incredible. Mm. And oh, that was it. Sister. That was it. And it was just, so I, and I well, said thank you to her. she was in the palm of the sister's hands, which I don't think Oprah tends to get in anybody's palms no, too easily. She, she loved Sister Mary Samuel, grabbed her by the hand like a little girl. Uh-huh. And walked at, like, so that uh -huh. we could go backstage and talk. It was, it, it was unreal. Mm -hmm. It was unreal. And, yeah, because, you know, Sister Mary Samuel has that, mm -hmm. that motherly, like, mm -hmm. you just want to hug her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just want to hold her hand. And that's, for, and she just fell in love with even the second time, we were standing there, and we heard this scream at the end of the long hall. And here comes Oprah running up with her hands stretched out, screaming, My sister's back, my sister's back, and hugging every one of us. And just thinking, you know, all this to say to the audience, be genuinely who you are. If you allow, if you are allowing God to make you who He wants you to be, who you were created to be, and allow Him to use you without fear mm -hmm. and with your own honesty and the gifts that He has given you, because you never know what person is standing somewhere in the vicinity that will you will see again in heaven, mm -hmm. and they'll be able to say, "And you're part of the reason." I made it back home. And you're part of the reason I began to believe. And I got very serious about things in my life that had to do with God. Uh, Sister, I think also we would all say the witness of the joy of the sisters, which is exuberant, and it is out there because, again, yes, this is something else that people in the audience might not understand. 
many times people will say, you're so joyful, you, you know, you just must never suffer. They don't understand. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> We get That's to the, really funny. The joyful <laughs> mysteries we all love. The sorrowful ones we'd like to skip, humanly speaking, with our own weaknesses. But if we're going to get to the glory of heaven, those sorrowful are a stumbling, a stepping stone, not a stumbling block. I hope they're not a stumbling block. To many people, they probably are. But if we embrace God's will, and so I think um, even as your story and even Oprah's story that you are reminding us, um, the sorrow has to be there, or we would never strive. The, that suffering is redemptive. Beautiful. That, you know what? It. I will. Okay, let me put it to you this way. I remember. Um, okay, my mom had passed away, yes. and two weeks after she passed away, um, I was kind of still in a. I mean, my head was spinning, and I was in New York, trying to just get things done. And a good friend of mine, a priest, said, "Look." You just need a break because we were trying to clean out my mom's, all yeah. of my mom's stuff. Mm. Don't ever do that I know. right it, after it, it a person. It's much. just too hard. It is too hard. And he said, you need to get out of that house. Good. You need to just take a break. Good. He said, I'm going to actually do a conference on pro-life. It's an, it's ecumenical. It's at an evangelical church. Why don't you come and volunteer and help? God bless CFR is going to be there. Sisters of Life. I was like, great. So I go. And he said, I told them about your mom and that you're here oh. to, like that you need a break. And so just to kind of let them know, you know. Sure. And he was just so wonderful about it. And wouldn't you know that this woman comes up to me who didn't didn't get the memo, right? <laughs> didn't get the memo about my mom just died two weeks ago. Because uh -huh. I wanted to just, it was interesting. She comes up to me and she says, gosh, you are so joyful. Oh. Can I tell you, I did not feel like a joyful person. Oh. But isn't it funny that there can be joy in the midst of sorrow? Oh, sister, that's beautiful. Because when you give yourself... In your yes. sorrow to yes. something else, and yes. you offer it to the Lord. There's joy there. That's a beautiful example. And I read uh, like that. That taught me so much. You probably felt like bursting into tears. <laughs> it, it taught me so much because I thought, oh. yes, you can be joyful and sorrowful at the same time. Because wasn't that, wasn't that what Christ was doing on the cross? There was joy and sorrow. Both. Beautiful, and, sister. And if we unite that to the cross, then we get a taste of the joy that comes with the sorrow. Right? Beautiful. Because we know that it's for something much greater. Mm -hmm. That it's not sorrow isn't for the sake of sorrow. Suffering exactly. isn't for the sake of suffering. Suffering is redemptive. Suffering mm -hmm. brings us closer to Christ. Beautiful. Yeah. Sister, thank you. That was beautiful. And for our audience also, you might kind of wonder about the colors because in the church, That's liturgical right. colors all speak to something. We know that certainly with the priest vestments, the red for martyrdom, the red for the Holy Spirit. Um, in the church, we think of charity with red, the green for the ordinary time. And um, that's just as important as anything else is that we live our every single moment and every single day the best that we possibly can. But with the Dominican habit, why the starkness of the black and white, which we love, and the white stands for purity, certainly, and it stands for joy. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful reminder to us constantly, as Sister Maria so beautifully said, that in the midst of the suffering, I must be joyful. And yet I will never escape all the suffering because it's also essential for my pathway to heaven. And so we look at the veils, which are black, and black is the symbol of death. It's the symbol of suffering. And so it's that perfect mixture of the white with the black of the suffering and the joy and as sister you just so beautifully expressed to our audience which is uh, worth a pearl of great price that in the midst of the suffering certainly the joy must abound because joy is a gift of the Holy Spirit and it does not leave us though the heart or the emotions might not at that right. moment feel happy joy is abiding mm -hmm. in the soul of those whose desire is to remain one with Christ and to walk this earth with Christ and for us very specially as another Mary in the world today. And um, just in wrapping this up, I think that in the presence of all of our sisters, I think Oprah saw an image of the Blessed Mother. Yeah, I think so too. A mom in heaven who loved her. And we know Mary loves us all. And I think... Um, the the enjoyment that um, I think of every time I, I think of your segment with her um, and with Sister Maria Catherine, 
the battering back and forth and her astonishment that you really could name the things of this world so accurately that she would have never thought that you had any ability to even know what in the world they were. Right. And you were naming them and you were placing them and you were... Um, and from the from that background of success, as we mentioned, that you gave it all up, as as you say, an expression that I thought was more southern, but you're using it, so maybe it's Bronx as well. Uh, it's not worth a hill of beans. I loved <laughs> it when right. you said that. Every single time, I'm like, oh gosh, that's kind of appeals to my southern roots, but perhaps it appears to appeals to your Bronx roots as maybe well. Maybe the Latin because we eat rice and beans. I don't know. We have rice and beans every meal growing up. Maybe that's. What, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I loved it. I thought how human and how divine and inspiring. Um, was that gift that we were able to give, mm-hmm. not just to the universal church, so to speak, but really to, to the entire world right. and how many thousands upon thousands, I'm sure I would say umpteen millions have been able yeah. to view that and just see that beautiful witness. So, Sister, thank you again for your um, coming and being a part of this today. Well, thank the you truth for shall yes set too. you free. That's right. Because we know what that means, and it truly does, because He does. And your witness of truth um, on that incredible platform was a great gift to all of us. So, Sister Maria, thank you again. Make sure you check in to uh, another episode where Sister Maria tells about her background, and um, that's a very inspiring story. Thanks, Sister. Um, so to speak, from rags to riches, but always because you have a saintly mom that's right there with you every step of the way. And now she is from heaven, as my saint mom is too. So, Sister, thank you so very much. And God bless you all. And mutual prayers that we always are those ambassadors for Christ, those icons for Mary that we are called to be in the world today. God bless you. So if you like the material on this particular podcast, then please click on the next podcast for another fascinating story.